DxO PhotoLab 8 has several new features and significant enhancements to existing ones. The latest version of DxO's legendary Deep Prime noise removal is now at version XD2S and is better than ever. The improved lens softness correction works amazingly well even on high contrast images. A new addition to the local adjustments, where you find control points, luminosity masks, and more, is the new Hue Mask, allowing you to create complex masks based on color. The Tone Curve introduces a new Luma Curve option to preserve saturation, as well as the ability to simply click and drag on your image to brighten or darken any range of it. You can now compare any two images using the Compare tool. Live Rollover lets you preview image enhancements in real time as you scroll through individual adjustments preset menus, and browsing the library is significantly faster. Let's have a look. We'll start with the new Deep Prime Noise Removal. The new one is called Deep Prime XD2S, and if you're already familiar with Deep Prime, you may have noticed that there is something missing. There's no longer a preview window here at the bottom. Deep Prime noise reduction is so processor intensive that it's not applied to the entire image until you export it. That means you need to have a way to preview it while you're applying it, and there's a new way to do that, called the loop. The loop is a small window that I can position anywhere on screen to look at my image at 100%, or even larger. I can zoom in all the way up to 1600%. I can also make the loop preview bigger by clicking here. You can see on this image that there is considerable noise in the background. That's because I'm only on the high quality noise reduction. In fact, if I turn this off entirely, you'll see what the original image looks like. But let's go ahead and turn on Deep Prime XD2S and check that out. The noise reduction now is absolutely phenomenal. Next, let's take a look at the lens softening correction. I'll go to this image here and position the preview over the pier. We're zoomed into 100% and you can see that this looks a little bit soft. This image is from a drone, which of course has a smaller camera, so maybe not the greatest quality. To correct for the lens softness, I'll simply enable lens softness compensation, and you can see right away what a difference this makes. In fact, let's zoom into 200%, and I'll toggle this on and off again. You can see that it's a significant improvement, but if you feel like it's gone a little bit too far, you can always take that compensation and dial it down a little bit. Next, let's take a look at the new Hue Mask. I'll go to this picture of the flowers and head over to my local adjustments. Here we have our control points, control lines, and so on, but I'm going to choose the new one, the Hue Mask. Let's say that I want to select the purple flowers. I'll go ahead and click on a purple flower, and you can see right away the mask that has been created. Now, this may or may not have gotten all the flower that I want, so down over here, I have a Hue Band where I can expand or contract the range that's been selected. As I'm dragging this out, you can see the mask expanding to cover more of the flowers. Depending on the image and the color that you're selecting, the mask may or may not be all that visible. So I'm going to switch this from color overlay to black and white mode, making it really easy to see what's selected. Now as I change the range of this, we'll see very clearly what part of the images is getting selected here. And you can see if you've gone too far, and if you need to back that off a little bit. Now with the purple flower selected, I'll switch this back to the color overlay mask and make a change. Let's take the exposure down a little bit on the purple, and then I'll take the saturation way up. Because this is one of the local adjustments, I can continue to modify this mask. For example, here, I can brush away parts of the flowers that I may not want to affect. Watch this. I'll go back to my mask view and switch it back to black and white and show that. Let's say I want to get rid of this flower here in the front. All this extra brightness and saturation that affects the flowers up here doesn't really make sense to hit the one down in front. So let's get rid of that. I'll show the masks, go up to the Erase tool, make sure it's nice and big, and just erase that part of the mask. Now we can see that the effect is only applying the flowers at the top. Next, let's take a look at the Tone Curve. I'll select this image here, go to my Tone Curve, and I'll start by dropping the shadows down and pulling the highlights up a little bit. You may have noticed as I did that that the image saturation increased quite a bit. I'll toggle that on and off, and you can really see the difference there. In some use cases, that may be exactly what you want, but sometimes you want to change contrast without affecting saturation. So now there's a way to do that. That's called the Luma Curve. I'll go ahead and reset this and enable Luma only. Now, as I darken the image in the shadows and brighten it in the highlights, if I toggle that on and off, we can see that the image saturation has not been affected. Finally, I can also adjust the image by using the new Tone Picker. I'll click this icon here, and then to darken the clouds, I'll simply click 
and drag down on the clouds. And then to brighten the sky, I'll click on the sky and drag up. You can see the effect that that has had on the curves here and how the points of where I clicked have been added automatically in the exact right spot on the curve. Next, let's say that you're treating a series of images for which you want to have a cohesive look across all of them. There's now a new compare tool that allows you to compare any image to any other one. Watch this. From the compare button, instead of just comparing to the original image, I now have the ability to use a current image as reference or even any external image on my system. I'll go ahead and choose Use Current Image as Reference, and you'll see that the thumbnail down here now has a little R on it indicating reference. At the moment, it's comparing the same image side by side, but now I can select any other image in my library and compare the two together. I can also change the orientation of the compare from side by side to top bottom, or even do a split view. I'll put these top to bottom, and let's make a change. I want to make this image looks like it belongs with this one. So I'll start with a little bit of white balance adjustment, maybe a little saturation, and perhaps a slight exposure adjustment. Now the images look more like they belong together. Finally, let's check out the live rollover preview. I'll load up this photo, and let's say that I want to play with the white balance on it. I'll go to my white balance tool, and you can see the setting by default is set to as shot, and I have a lot of other options in here. To preview these, all I have to do is roll the mouse over them, and they instantly preview over the entire image. I can actually run through these very quickly, and you'll see that preview updating immediately. This doesn't just work for white balance, though. Let's say I want to try a creative LUT. I'll go ahead and search for my LUTs, load a LUT file, and as I start rolling through these, you can see exactly what this is going to look like before I even apply it. This also works for my black and white previews. I'll go back to my color effects, go to color black and white rendering, enable black and white, and choose the different options. Once again, you can see that updating in real time. Finally, you're going to see some significant speed improvements when browsing large libraries. Watch this. I'll go to my photo library. I'll load up a folder that has almost 1,500 images in it. And now as I scroll through here, you'll see that the thumbnails are updating very, very quickly. And those are some of the top new features and improvements in DxO Photolab 8.